Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel, Truth First Christianity in a Post-Christian Country. This is video number eight in the series, breaking down the 1689 Baptist Confession, also known as the Second London Confession. If you're new to this series, I want to provide a disclaimer. Not every Baptist follows this statement of faith or confession. It is very popular among the more Calvinistic views in the Baptist spectrum. However, you have fundamental Baptists, independent fundamental Baptists, various organizations. Often they create their own statements of faith or have uh, ones with slight variants. Um, some rely strictly on scripture. Uh, every denomination, though, will have some secondary doctrines that uh, maybe are a little harder to verify with Scripture than the plain doctrines of Christianity. That being said, we are beginning now with chapter 6, the fall of mankind and sin and its punishment. As always, the Scriptures referenced will be in the uh, video description. Uh, chapter 6, article 1 says, God created humanity upright and perfect, that he gave them righteous law, uh, that he that would have led to life had they have kept it, um, but threatened death if they broke it. They did not remain for long in their position of honor. Uh, Satan used the craftiness of the serpent to seduce Eve, and then seduced Adam. Uh, Adam acted with without any uh, outside compulsion, and he deliberately transgressed. The law of the creation and the command given to them about eating the forbidden fruit. God was pleased in keeping with his wise and holy counsel to permit this act because he had purposed to direct it for his own glory. That for his own glory is very important. Through the entire Old Testament, one theme that comes again throughout is that God is not saving the nation of Israel for their own glory or because of any special devotion to them, they are a people of a covenant made with Abraham, and the purpose of it was so that God could be glorified, so that the living God could be raised above uh, pagans, that could be raised above idols of stone and wood. Uh, there was a purpose behind the relationship with Israel, and it always went back to God being glorified. Uh, Article 2 says, By this sin our first parents fell from their original righteousness and communion with God. We fell in them, and through this death came upon all. All became dead in sin and completely defiled in all the capabilities and parts of soul and body. The, there's a saying in 12-step uh, programs like AA and NA, um, you know, addiction is chronic, progressive, and fatal. I have adopted those three terms to describe sin as well. One thing we see happen in the Old Testament progressively is a chronic, progressive, and fatal consequence of sin, that first sin. Sin does not just mean that we say a bad word. There is a mark upon us. We are born and conceived in sin. It's a continuation. It's generational. And this mark is upon us because the human race has offended a perfectly holy and just God. In order for God to be merciful, there has to be some way of humanity atoning for sin against God. I find it remarkable when you look at the story of Adam and Eve. After their sin, the first thing was that they noticed they were naked before God. Anybody who has been convicted in their sin knows exactly what that means because they have felt it. They tried to cover themselves with fig leaves to cover their nakedness, to cover their sin. They covered their own. Well, God basically said, this is inadequate because he took those off. And he put skins of an innocent animal on them, gave them clothing to cover them. It's a foreshadowing of penal substitutionary atonement, the death blood sacrifice of something innocent to cover the sins of mankind. If you dig the layers of the onion back, what you see happening there is that one sin begat another, begat another, begat another, begat another, and started a chain reaction. There can't just be one sin in a perfect system and it not cause consequences throughout the entire thing. Where do we get to a resolution? In Jesus Christ, the once and for all perfect sin atonement. 
It's a fascinating story. The Bible is a narrative, one complete story from beginning to end. Article 3, by God's appointment, uh, they were the root and representatives of the whole human race, talking about Adam and Eve. Because of this, the guilt of their sin was accounted and their corrupt nature passed on to all of the offspring that descended after them um, from ordinary procreation, just people as they were born. Their descendants are now conceived in sin. And we think of David's uh, testimony in Psalm 51, in sin did my mother conceive me. And by nature, we are children of wrath. That sounds harsh, but throughout the Bible, you'll see reference made to the fact that, uh, you know, we are God haters, um, and we uh, we can't we can't connect with God. We can't be in His presence uh, without some form of correction, without the atoning death of Jesus Christ, because we're not holy, perfect, and just. Right? God is. Um, so the only way before Him is to be set free by Jesus. So the descendants are conceived in sin, and by nature are children of wrath, the servants of sin, the partakers of death, and all other miseries. Uh, We often forget that because death is a part of life, and the secular view of our culture doesn't make the connection, but death exists because of sin. Sin is chronic, progressive, and fatal. One of the gifts of humanity prior to the fall was an eternal life and a connection uh, with God, a permanent connection uh, and fellowship. Uh, So it led to all other miseries, spiritual, temporal, and eternal, unless the Lord Jesus sets them free. That's how that article ends, which is great. Um, Article 4, all actual transgressions arise from the first corruption. I think we've covered that in what I've said about the others. By it, we are thoroughly biased against and disabled and antagonistic toward all that is good. Uh, And we are completely inclined toward this evil. Again, harsh, but I would reference you to the words of the itinerant evangelist Paul Washer. Uh, His words are brutal. He's like an old school Puritan, but he speaks truth, uh, particularly to those that are parents. We note that we don't have to teach our children to do evil, lie, manipulate, be cruel and brutal to each other, that they do it naturally. But we have to work overtime to teach them virtuous things and good things and to pay attention to God's word and what God has to say about how we should act. Um, The final article, Article 5, during this life, this corruption of nature remains in those who are regenerated. So those who are saved, we still have our corrupted nature, but it is pardoned and put to death through Christ. Yet both this corruption of nature and all actions arising from it are truly and actually sin. Um, So we have the gift of eternal life in Christ if we're converted, saved, uh, but we still live in a sinful fallen world. It's not until uh, the return of Christ our bodies will be raised and made incorruptible. Uh, There is another view doctrinally that we are... uh, Uh, that our spirits go to be with God immediately after death. Uh, For example, the person on the cross beside Jesus, and he says, I assure you this day you will be with me in paradise. Anyway, there it is. There's number six, uh, the fall of mankind, sin. Uh, And I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to talking to you next week on the next installment of uh, the Baptist Confession. Please check out the other videos in the playlist. If you want to support my work, go to Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett and buy one of the books I've written. Uh, You can get any from the Just Tell Me the Truth About Christianity series in paperback or for your Kindle iPhone or iPad. You can also buy my nonfiction history, Shipwrecked in the Land of King Tobacco, the first Washington family immigrant to America, about George Washington's great-grandfather, John. It's a fascinating story that that, uh, ironically had yet to be told. Uh, this book is also available. You can purchase it on Amazon or if you happen to make a visit to George Washington's birthplace, uh, 1732 Pope's Creek Road, George Washington's birthplace, Virginia. Thank you so much and as always, uh, may your work today bear fruit. God bless you. Don't want it, don't.